I'm starting a secret fashion club with the school's most popular guy. It was like a scene from a movie. I never would have imagined that Adrian, the most popular perfect guy at our school, someone I was sure barely knew I existed, would have so much in common with me. And judging from the horrified look on his face when he came back into the classroom and saw that I'd found his lost sketchbook, I definitely wasn't supposed to find out. I'd left behind my wallet. Thankfully, it was on the desk where I'd left it. I was about to leave the class again when I noticed something on the ground. It looked like a thin sketchbook. I crouched down to pick it up and curious, I flipped through it and was floored. The book was filled with beautiful, intricate sketches of some of the most unique outfits I had ever seen. I brought the book closer to my face in satisfaction. The artist was a skilled designer and was clearly inspired by a lot of Asian fashion. The outfits were crazy, outlandish, and absolutely perfect. Who drew this? They were the exact kind of person I was looking for in my club. They were the exact kind of person I wanted to be friends with. Who? I heard footsteps rushing over. I glanced up at the door just in time to see him rush in, flushed and panting from exertion. Adrian Storm, the Adonis of our school. Tall, dark-haired, and gorgeous. According to the girls, anyway. But I too had to agree that he was good-looking. And he was standing there, staring at me with the most intense expression I'd ever seen on his face. Hey, he crossed the room in three steps. Where'd you find that? His tone was deceptively calm, but I could see the frantic look in his eye. I smiled nervously. Uh, it was on the floor. Wait, the way he was looking at the book. No way. That couldn't be it, right? My eyes widened. Adrian, is this yours? As if to answer my question, Adrian reached out and snatched the book out of my hands. Thanks for finding it. I thought I'd lost it, he mumbled. Adrian shoved the book in his backpack, looking unnerved. You shouldn't have gone through it, though. That's rude. I blushed. It was pretty rude. Uh, sorry, I paused, staring at his face. If he was really the one who drew those designs, then that meant I might have a chance. I had to ask. Hey, Adrian. Adrian! I was interrupted by a girl's voice. I looked at the door again and saw a small group of people walk in. Adrian's friends. The girl who called him bounded to his side, held and punched his shoulder. Hey, what happened? You ran off so quickly I thought you needed to take a massive dump, she joked, giving a wide grin. For a second, an annoyed expression flashed on Adrian's face, but it was replaced with a smile as he looked at her. Sorry, sorry. Just remembered I forgot something. The pretty blonde girl smiled at him, and then she looked at me. Her smile fell. Oh. Hey, you. This pleasant young lady was Sierra. She was Adrian's friend, though according to the rumors, they were hooking up and she wanted to date him. I didn't think they made a very good match. What are you still doing here? She raised an eyebrow at me, resting an elbow on Adrian's shoulder. Still looking for members of that little club of yours? My gaze dropped to my feet. Man, not now. I just want to go home. Did I really have to deal with her now? Smirking, Sierra turned her attention to me. She never missed a chance to engage in her favorite pastime, which was making my life even worse than it already was for some reason. When I heard you started a club, I thought it was a joke. But you're serious, she laughed. Did you expect to find other people here who walk around dressing like you do? She gestured at my clothing. Instinctively, I looked down at myself. I was dressed in mostly black, wearing a white silk dress shirt, a waistcoat, a long cloak, and dark trousers. The waistcoat was covered in intricate gold designs. It was an outfit I designed on my own. The group of people watching by the door chuckled to themselves. I blushed, embarrassed. They don't have to dress like me, I grumbled. Sierra scoffed. Yeah? Then what are the requirements? They just have to like fashion, I said, raising my head to meet her mocking gaze. Unique types of fashion that you don't see often. I just think it's cool to see how people can express themselves through clothing. Is that so weird? I asked the question. But I already knew the answer. Sierra blinked at me, unimpressed. Get on a freaking runway then, she drawled. Don't make that our problem. Come on, leave him alone. Behind her, another one of Adrian's friends spoke up. Derek. From what I knew about him, he was kind of nerdy and was in the chess club. Seemed to be Adrian's best friend. 
You're too pretty to be acting like you stepped right out of Mean Girls. Sierra turned her head to glare at him, before looking back at Adrian. Did you find what you were looking for? She asked sweetly. Adrian nodded, but he was still watching me carefully. I felt uncomfortable under his gaze and in their presence in general. These were the popular, normal kids. I felt so jealous of them. The whole reason I started my fashion club was because I wanted to know what it felt like to belong in a group like that. But I couldn't even focus on my own self-pity. Not when Adrian was staring at me like that. You guys can go on ahead, he said. I'll catch up. Sierra, Derek, and the rest of the group looked confused. But nothing about Adrian's voice left any room for questioning. She pulled away, and they left the class together. Again, Adrian and I were alone. Well, that was a little weird, but at least I had the chance to ask Adrian my question. But he spoke first. Ryan, right? When I noticed, he sighed. <sighs> Listen, do me a favor and pretend you never saw this, alright? What? Why? Is it a secret or something? Adrian gave me a look of disbelief. I don't think I can do that, Adrian. I mean, if you can do stuff like this, then... I felt small under Adrian's gaze. Still, I steeled my resolve and went ahead anyway. Then, I think you'd be a perfect addition to my club. In Adrian's eyes, I saw surprise. Then anger. Don't even think about trying to get me involved in this. I just draw outfits sometimes. Do you ever think I'd walk around looking like a clown? Like you do? Get real. Seriously, I promise no one wants anything to do with this mess. Like I said, forget you ever saw this. With that harsh and stern order, Adrian turned away and left the class. I felt like a deflated balloon. What kind of crappy luck had I been cursed with? A few days later, in two months there was going to be a festival where all the clubs would present something to the school. I'd been, I'd been given permission to start my club, but if I didn't have at least one other member to present with that day, my club would be disbanded. I was desperate. But not desperate enough to actually bother Adrian. He and I were practically on different planes of existence, and the one time he'd actually come to my level, it was to tell me in no uncertain terms that he didn't want anything to do with me. Ouch. A few days after that whole mess, I headed to the bathroom during one of my classes, needing to relieve myself. I moved to the sink to wash my hands, but even the sound of the water running didn't drown out the strange noises that my ears picked up, coming from the stall behind me. Heavy breathing, from more than one person. One of which definitely sounded like a girl. Ah, whoops. I blushed, but I didn't say anything. Unfortunately, the sound of the water made the people behind me aware of my presence. Crap! Dree, I think someone's in here! I heard Sierra's voice say. Sierra. And Dree. Who else could it be but Adrian? Sure enough, the door slowly creaked open and Sierra's head poked out. We made eye contact through the mirror, and I got the satisfaction of seeing her mortified expression. I looked back at my hands as if I hadn't seen her. You! What are you doing here? She shrieked. The door opened further, and there stood Adrian, buttoning up his shirt. What else would he be doing, Sierra? He asked, exasperated. Don't yell, you're already not supposed to be here. Panicked, Sierra looked up at him. But he saw us, what if he tells? He won't. Adrian insisted. I raised my eyebrows without looking at either of them. He seemed awfully confident about that. You should leave, he said gently. Make sure there are no teachers outside first. Sierra left the bathroom as Adrian came to stand beside me. Why do you keep hanging out with her even though you don't like her? The question left me before I could stop it. I couldn't help it. I was really curious about the answer. Adrian's response was a glare. You're not going to tell anyone about this, right? My question was completely ignored. Our school was pretty strict about students doing things like this on school grounds. If I told a teacher, it very well could end with both Sierra and Adrian getting suspended. I didn't dislike either of them enough to do that. Not even Sierra, despite how mean she was to me. I had no reason to tell, and I was about to tell Adrian as much when I realized how good of an opportunity I suddenly had. I won't. On one condition... I switched off the tap and turned to Adrian, who was staring at me in shock. He was only barely taller than me, but he just felt so much larger. I was nervous, but even more desperate. Desperate to keep my club open. Desperate for some kind of company. 
even if I had to do something as pathetic as this. Join my club. Adrian blinked. What? You're not in a club, are you? Just up until the festival? I continued. You don't even need to participate in it. If by the time the festival comes, you don't like my club, then you can just leave. Adrian scowled at me. He looked so irritated that I actually thought he might hit me for a second, even though I didn't know him to be a violent person. Why do you want me to join your club so badly? He asked. Are you lonely or something? I was, but it was more than that. I want you to join because your designs are beautiful, Adrian. I want to bring them into the real world. I willed myself to maintain eye contact with him, holding his dark eyes hostage with mine. I can do them justice. There was not a single designer who didn't long to see their designs brought to life. And something told me Adrian, despite his obvious desire to hide his skill, was the same. Sure enough, he stared at me for a second before giving me a resigned sigh. <sighs> Fine. Yes! Now. I just had to convince him to actually stay in the club. Later that day, our club room was a small abandoned classroom. It had apparently been used by the cooking club until there had been a little accident, and the school had to give them a proper kitchen to use instead. There were several burn marks on the floor. I had gone ahead and moved some of my sewing supplies into that room, including a couple of mannequins and a machine. I told Adrian where the classroom was, and the next day after school, he appeared at the door, a deep scowl plastered on his handsome face. Scary. Welcome! I grinned at him as I switched on the light. He gave me a stony glare back. I wasn't used to seeing this kind of expression. Usually Adrian wore the kind of gentle expression that made girls and guys flock to him. I guessed I wasn't exactly deserving of that kind of attitude, though. So what exactly do you want me to do here? He asked, sitting down. And don't expect me to tell anyone about this. I wouldn't hear the end of it if anyone found out. Yeah, fair enough. I'm pretty weird. Ignoring the nervous pit in my stomach, I drifted closer to him. Well, can you start by showing me your designs? Adrian watched me apprehensively, before reaching into his backpack and pulling out the same sketchbook. I took it from him and started to go through it. Sorry if you were expecting something like the stuff you wear, but I like colors more, he muttered, leaning back in his seat. With me sitting there in my black waistcoat and trousers, it was probably easy to assume that I wouldn't like colorful clothing, but that was completely far from the truth. Adrian's bright and extravagant designs were enchanting to me. More than that, they were detailed and completely doable. My whole body itched to create them. They're so beautiful, I sighed. When I looked up at him, he was looking away. Why don't you want anyone to know about them? Adrian rolled his eyes. It's not a big deal. I just draw them for fun. I squinted my eyes at him. I wasn't convinced. This looked like passion, not someone who was bored. So why hide them? I doubted I was going to get the answer to that question immediately, but I wasn't too worried about that. I'd actually gotten a member. Even though I was fairly sure he hated me, I couldn't help but be excited. A week later, I began gathering supplies. This was easy. My interest in this stuff had started with my mother, who made a lot of clothes for her job. So between rummaging through her fabrics and spending my savings, I soon had enough to start creating. Despite his reluctance, Adrian showed up at the club every day. He hid his involvement with me from his friends, and most times, it really felt like he would rather be somewhere else. Yet, I couldn't help but get the feeling that he was oddly curious about what I was going to come up with. I could barely focus during class. Once the final bell went off, I ran out of the classroom and into our club room. As usual, Adrian appeared around 20 minutes later. He stood over my shoulder as I cut up some bright green cloth. Why are you so into this stuff? he asked. Surprised, I raised my head and looked up at him. It wasn't often he asked me a question. Or spoke to me, really. Don't you think it's great? I looked back at my work. People always talk about art and music when they talk about human expression. But the stuff we wear on our bodies can be so unique and tell so many stories. I'm kind of obsessed with it. I smiled then, a little sadly. I guess that's weird of me, though. A beat. And then Adrian said, I don't think it's that weird. <laughs> Your friends think it is, I laughed. And so do you. You're so good at this, but you hide it. 
As the first outfits started to come together, Sierra made it her personal mission to make my time at the school even more unpleasant. Maybe she was angry at me because I'd heard her and Adrian in the bathroom. I didn't know. Either way, she really got on my nerves. You didn't wear your cloak today, Dracula? Her voice was loud, reaching me as I casually made my way down the hallway. I ignored her and went to my locker. When I didn't respond, she walked over and stood beside me, demanding my attention. Adrian was nowhere to be seen. He might have stopped her. At least I like to imagine that he would have. Instead, Derek appeared by her side to try and calm her down. It's your fault Adrian barely has time for me anymore, she hissed, quiet enough for only us to hear. Ever since you saw us, he's been avoiding me. That was probably because of my club. In a way, it was my fault. Best you didn't know that, though. Sierra, come on! Derek took her by the arm and gently tried to pull her away. Just leave him alone. You're being unreasonable. Rumor had it that Derek liked Sierra just as much as Sierra liked Adrian, even though she never noticed him. Sounded like a messed up dynamic to me. Sierra allowed herself to be pulled away, still glaring at me. I sighed. I had long since accepted that I was weird and that I stood out. I would have to hide myself if I didn't want that to be the case, but that just seemed impossible to me. Being myself was the only option. Still, I couldn't help but bite the inside of my cheek as I noticed kids around me glancing my way and laughing. Soon, calling me Dracula got pretty popular. A week later, the club became my safe space. And Adrian, despite his best efforts to remain uninterested, became part of that safe space. As it became more and more obvious that I was serious about bringing his vision to life, Adrian's own passion started to show. Where did you even learn to do this? He whispered in awe, staring at the mannequin. I crouched down in front of it, holding a couple of pins between my lips. TV and internet, mostly. I responded in a muffled voice. It's not hard to learn if you really want to. Adrian scoffed. People have to pay thousands of dollars and go to school to learn this stuff. You're just a beast. I smiled. When I looked up at him, he was still staring at the colorful dress. The light caught in his eyes. I could say the same about you. I tacked two pieces of fabric together. I wasn't kidding when I said your designs are some of the best I've ever seen. Adrian blinked. He glanced down at me, and then, to my surprise, he actually looked embarrassed. Thanks, but it's just some stuff I do when I'm bored. Well, it's awesome stuff, I stood up. Thanks, but not many people would agree with that, Adrian said. I'm a guy, you know. I mean, people would think it's pretty weird that I'm into it in the first place, not to talk of actually being good at it. I watched him, curious. I really never expected someone like him to have self-esteem issues. As if he saw the confusion on my face, he decided to clarify. I mean, back in middle school, people picked on me when they found out. Oh, now it made sense. He'd gotten bullied just like I was. Well, you don't need to worry about me judging you, I said, trying to raise his spirits. I'm probably a bigger weirdo than you could ever be. Suddenly, Adrian looked at me firmly. You keep saying that, he said. Saying what? That you're weird. Look, I know what I said that day, and I'm sorry, but... You're not, Ryan. You know that, right? I blinked at him. Well, of course I was weird. I walked around looking like I'd stepped out of a Bram Stoker novel. If that wasn't weird, I didn't know what was. But Adrian seemed to disagree with that notion entirely. You're just... really passionate, he insisted. There's nothing wrong with that, so... Stop talking like that, all right? I really didn't know how to respond. I guess I'd gotten so used to seeing myself as the weird kid that having someone challenge that so directly was a little jarring. I couldn't handle him looking at me so earnestly, too. I smiled sheepishly and looked back at my work. I'll try my best, I mumbled. A few weeks later, having a close friend for the first time in ages was so refreshing. It made me realize that somewhere deep inside, I had started to dread going to school every day. But as Adrian and I started to grow closer, I woke up every morning excited to leave the house. Excited to see him. He was self-conscious about his interests, that much was obvious. I thought he wouldn't want to hang out with me outside the club because of this, in case anyone found out, so I was shocked when he actually started to seek out my company. He would come and sit beside me during lunch, which drew a lot of attention. After all, when did someone get to see the most popular guy at school willingly sitting beside the weird kid? One such afternoon, Sierra and Derek walked up to our table. 
Adrian, what is going on? She demanded. You barely talk to me anymore, and now you're hanging out with this guy. She glared at me. Are you blackmailing him or something? I blushed and looked away. Damn, she'd seen right through me. I can't make new friends? Adrian demanded, his tone annoyed. Sierra shrank back a little, surprised by it. You can do whatever you like, Derek chimed in. But it's kind of coming out of nowhere, you know? I stared down at my lunch, feeling a little bad. Now Adrian was losing his friends because of me. Guys, come on, Adrian sighed. I'm sorry if I haven't been hanging out with you as much, but I've just been busy with other stuff. I just like hanging out with Ryan, okay? I still felt guilty, but I had to admit, it felt really, really good to hear him say that. It felt nice to have someone who actually liked me. I couldn't help but smile to myself. He actually liked hanging out with me. Maybe Adrian was right. Maybe I really wasn't weird after all. After the both of them left, Adrian turned to me again. I was still staring at my food, but I could feel his gaze on me. Even as we ate in comfortable silence, I could feel his gaze periodically returning to me. It made me sweat, and not from the heat of my heavy clothes. For the first time in, well, ever, I had something else I thought about just as much as my clothes. It started with how often I would find myself thinking about Adrian. The way he looked when he was thinking up a new design. The softness of his hair, the curve of his lips when he smiled. It was when I found myself lying awake in bed that night, thinking about his arms and how they looked like they would give amazing hugs, that I realized what was happening. My eyes widened as I sat up in the dark. I placed my hands on my cheeks, feeling how warm they had gotten. Oh my god, I whispered to myself. I like him. As weird as I was, it seemed even I wasn't free from being a little basic. Seriously, crushing on the hottest guy at school? I sighed and flopped back down onto my mattress. What a cliché. The next day. With only three weeks left before the club festival, Adrian and I began to make serious preparations. I got to witness him make his designs firsthand, and watching the way his pencils moved on the page was nearly hypnotic. And the way he remained laser-focused on the page was even more attractive. Are we going to get live models, or are we just going to show off the mannequins? Adrian asked the question without looking up from the page. I was still so focused on his face that I didn't realize he had said anything until he raised his head to look up at me expectantly. What? I blinked. Oh, uh, well, the mannequins, probably. I don't know who we could use as models. Right. He looked back down and got back to work. And even though I tried to look anywhere else, I couldn't help but be drawn to his face. I never had anything like a crush before, especially not on a guy. Still, I knew that I was definitely a crush I was experiencing, and even though I still felt a little basic, I couldn't help it. But even though it wasn't a secret that Adrian swung both ways, I didn't imagine for a second that I had a chance with him. I was content with just being in his company at all. You seem kind of distracted today, he looked up at me again. Is there something on your mind? I desperately searched my mind for something I could use as an excuse. Actually, now that I thought about it, there was something I was worried about. You're helping me prepare for the festival, I said. Does that mean you actually plan to stay in the club? Adrian smiled at me. It was a slow, warm smile that made my face grow hot. Ryan, I would not be putting all this effort in if I planned on leaving. He gestured at the multiple sheets of paper on the table, all full of his sketches. Oh, <laughs> right, I laughed. I just thought you might not want to stay. After all, you're going to have to let the entire school know that you're like me. He raised a brow. And what are you? <laughs> Weird was the first thing that came to mind. But I knew he didn't like me calling myself that. Passionate, I said instead. Adrian nodded in approval. Right. But to be honest, I am worried. He leaned closer to me and reached out. I felt his fingers brush my hair as he picked a piece of stray fabric out of my hair. My face grew even warmer. I just hoped it wasn't obvious. I don't know what people are going to say about me, he continued. But seeing you be so unapologetically into this stuff has kind of inspired me. Is that corny? He laughed. A little bit, I said softly. I hoped my face didn't look as giddy as I felt. Well, it's the truth. You're fun to hang out with. I couldn't handle it anymore. Hearing him say something like that so frankly was way too much for me. Embarrassed, I brought a hand up to cover my face. I heard Adrian laugh. Suddenly, strong fingers grasped my wrist and gently pulled my hand out of the way. 
Adrian was staring at me with a mix of amusement and confusion on his face. What's up with you? Sorry, it's just... I'm not used to hearing stuff like that. I gave him a shy smile. What, are compliments really that big of a deal to you? When they're coming from you, they are. I didn't realize how much those words sound like flirting until I actually said them. Adrian raised his brows in surprise. That's... He breathed out a laugh, still holding onto my hand. That's actually really cute. I don't know what kind of face I made in response, but it was enough to make Adrian frown slightly. Crap, sorry, was that weird? No, I quickly shook my head. No, it wasn't. Thank you, for the compliment. They really mean a lot to me. Like I've said, they make me feel, uh, really nice. God, what am I saying? I wanted to hide my face again, but something about the smile Adrian gave me told me that he was enjoying himself looking at it. In that case, I wouldn't hide, even though I could practically hear my own heart beating. Hey, Ryan. Adrian's tone was suddenly cautious, as if he wanted to ask me an important question. But before he could get it out, the door swung open. And there stood Derek. Wow. Derek stepped inside and looked around, eyes wide and curious. So you really did join this mess. Adrian leaned back from me and stood up. Derek? He squinted his eyes. What are you doing here? Derek glanced at me briefly before looking at Adrian again. Just confirming something. What, are you guys a thing too? He smiled slightly. Sierra is really not going to like that. For some reason, there was something oddly sinister about Derek's tone. Adrian seemed to have picked up on it as well, suddenly looking apprehensive. What, are you going to tell her? Adrian asked. Probably. She's been dying to know why you barely give her any attention these days. Derek looked at me again. You've seriously been spending it all with this guy? Do you have any idea how much she likes you? I shrank back under his judgmental gaze. At this rate, Adrian was going to lose his friends because of me. Worst still, who knew what would happen if Sierra found out? She was the kind of person to run anyone's reputation into the ground just out of spite. I had to do something. Stealing my resolve, I stepped forward. I made him. Adrian cut me off. Cut it out, Derek. I know you like her, but you don't need to act like this just because you're jealous. I'm here because I want to be. Derek scoffed. He simply turned around and left the room, not saying another word. Adrian sighed and sat back down, his brows furrowed as he got back to work. The frown on his face told me he had just as bad a feeling about this as I did. Later that afternoon, by the end of the day, everyone knew. All Derek had to do was tell Sierra. She made sure the rumors spread like pollen. The whole school was talking about how Adrian had joined my weird club and how he had totally abandoned his real friends to hang out with that emo loser. Some rumors even spread that we were dating. Those ones quickly became the most popular. I was devastated. Overnight, Adrian had been demoted to the same social status as me. But even though he was upset, he refused to leave my side. He could have just told everyone that I blackmailed him, but he refused. I meant what I said, about you inspiring me. I'm not going to try and hide to impress anybody anymore. He chose me over his popular friends and his status. I really couldn't believe it. Even though we had both been socially murdered at that point, we continued our preparations for the festival. And when the day came, we proudly displayed our creations for the entire school to see. It was so satisfying watching their unimpressed faces slowly change to odd expressions as we showed off more and more of our work. After that day, we even had three more people express their interest in our club. Just like that, I had even more people to share my passion with. And that's what it was. Passion. Maybe I was a little strange to most people, but Adrian helped me learn that I should be more proud of my passion. After all, passion fueled creativity. And creativity was what I admired the most about people. It was also what I admired the most about Adrian. A week after the festival, we left school together after our club meeting. Oh yeah, Adrian looked over at me. I just remembered. I've been meaning to ask you something. I looked back at him. Really? What? Adrian smiled at me. If it turns out that I'm completely wrong and you don't like guys after all, this is going to be as embarrassing as anything. But here goes. Do you want to go out sometime? Maybe to a movie? I felt a swell of joy. 
Barely able to contain it, I bit the inside of my mouth and looked away, blushing. Jeez, was it really that obvious? I mumbled. You blush so easily, man. I'd be blind if I didn't notice. Adrian laughed. I laughed as well, lowering my head slightly. I didn't even want to know how red I was at that moment. Well, it's a good thing you're not blind then. <laughs> because the answer is yes. Conclusion Adrian and I started dating officially after going out a couple of times. It was a major first for me, but it was exciting as it was new. As for Derek and Sierra, they got together as well, but one glance at them was enough to tell that they weren't the best match for each other. Together, Adrian and I ran our club. It stayed small, but we liked it that way. I was just happy to have a group of people I could share my zeal with, and I was happy to have Adrian by my side. I was so happy I'd left my wallet behind that day. The end. Do you have a weird passion you keep hidden to yourself? Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.